Well, thank you very much for taking time out of your schedule to speak with me. Of course. Yeah, love the film. Thank you. And man. I've loved all the work you've done in the past. Thank you. All three of your films have been very personal. How did your personal experiences really influence Waves? Oof. Uh, a lot. <laughs> this one, you know, there's a lot going on in the movie. And uh, it's, it, I would say the whole narrative is almost like autobiography, fictional narrative, autobiography, in like looping together that whole time. Um, and some of it's, a lot of it's myself, uh, things from my life, um, things from uh, my girlfriend's lives or loved one's lives, um, uh, collaborating with Calvin, working on things from his life. So it started in this really, really personal thing for me. And then, you know, I think because there's so much in the movie and so many viewpoints, it was trying to see outside myself as well uh, and uh, put it all into it, yeah. You talk about Kevin, who you've done It Comes at Night with, and then now you've done Waves. He's having a really great year. Um, how did he influence the film as well? Yeah, well, we met, uh, we met on my last movie. Uh, loved each other, wanted to work together again. Um, and then about a year later, uh, started trying to write, and it was extremely collaborative from the beginning. It was like figuring out how we can tailor, tailor make this role for him um, and draw on his, his experiences, you know? So we were doing, we call them mini therapy sessions, uh, talking about our past, that time in our lives, um, uh, relationships with his father, mother, siblings, uh, girlfriends, school pressures, um, family history, uh, and going through all that. And then I'd write, and then, uh, and then the collaboration just continued for about like, you know, uh, another eight months until we started shooting and he would give me notes and I'd go back and write more. It, w it was amazing. Well, as you said, this film is very much designed to address a lot of the issues that today's youth face. Uh, do you think that this film will still be as important in 10 years and would that even be a good thing if it's still important? Yeah, that's a good point. I do think, um, I hope it's a movie of the moment, but I also think there's a lot of themes and, and things it's dealing with that are a bit timeless, you know, hopefully. Um, and I hope, uh, I hope the specificity of the moment uh, also can make it universal for time, for, for times to come, you know, and for the future, I really hope so, you know. Some of the subject matter that the film deals with is very difficult territory, yeah. but you approach the characters with so much humanity. Why was it important for you to take this approach? Uh, well, I mean, you know, humans are complex, you know. Uh, we have good and bad in all of us, you know. We're very, very, very complex. And um, to me, that's more honest. I just wanted to be honest uh, and, um, you know, make something that hopefully uh, feels empathetic, that's about trying to understand and not about trying to judge, you know, because I think we're far too complex to just judge. we got to try to understand each other's experiences. Yeah, definitely. This film is, above everything else, about empathy and love. Uh, what do you hope that audiences will gain from this movie about that? Well, um, that would be, if they take that and, like, bring that into their life some way, that would be a dream. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know, man. I, I, I hope, uh, at a base level first, I just hope you connect. I hope you feel those things and connect at that level, and then if that applies to anything in your life, that would be incredible. This is definitely one of your more ambitious films, like, visually. What were some of the more difficult things to pull off? Um, difficult things, uh, shockingly, a lot of it felt really liberating, just going from, like, one location to over 50, and, like, staying in a house to, like, all this, like, all these locations and different cars, um, uh, it was actually really amazing and liberating. There were some hard times. Uh, the hardest things that pop in my head is, um, uh, recreating some stuff and shooting some very, very heavy emotional scenes. Uh, and, you know, the actors not wanting to stop until it felt honest, you know, like really, really going there. And then there's just some practicalities, like there's a long single take walking into a party with a ton of extras and a very complex lighting setup, and it was my first time doing anything like that. Um, so there was all that, but I had the best crew, the best team in the world, the best actors, so I feel very, very blessed. One of the things that impressed me most about the film was that the sound design was so rich in detail. What were some of the things you did to make that really stand out? Uh, I, I think I have one of the best sound designers there is. His name's Johnny Byrne, um, and uh, his team is amazing uh, and worked very, very, very hard. To Basically, the sound is... Um, 
it's doing what the visuals and other aspects of the movie are trying to do in the sense of like immerse you in the character's subjectivity. So anything to bring you closer to immersing in their emotional experience, that's really the goal. So that can range from uh, just making things realistic to making thing, pushing it and making it more expressionistic because it feels true to what the character is going through, uh, to using different sounds in their world, um, panning speakers through the room uh, or panning through the speakers to echo camera movement or the character's headspace, using atmospheres in the rears to make it feel like you're sitting at this bench with these characters. And um, it it's, did a ton of ton of work, and it's a, dra a gigantic part of hopefully making this very visceral, immersive experience come to life and put you there. You know, definitely. On the same note of sound, music plays a yeah. huge role in the film. You talked a bit about how like the music kind of shaped the film as you were writing and making it. Yeah, I mean, um, I think aspects of the in the DNA of this forever was like you know kind of a soundtrack film. Um, in the vein of movies I love, like Days and Confused and Boogie Nights and Goodfellas and American Graffiti, and especially I think because of high school. You know, in high school for myself, music got me through a lot of things. Um, so I really wanted the music, I wanted to not only help it dictate the ebb and flow, but also bring you closer to the characters' uh, headspace in their world. Um, so I was sort of just building an epic playlist forever. And then, um, and then as I was writing, just implementing it, and it, and it formed everything, you know, building this sort of beautiful playlist uh, of a lot of my favorite music that hopefully feels honest to the characters and, and kind of telling a story with that as well to where a narrative's being told, the narrative of the film is being told from, from song to song, you know? Well, I remember when the film was initially announced, some people were rumoring it was going to be like a musical. Yeah. Um, was that ever true? No, it, it was hilarious because we were putting the movie together uh, in pre-production and uh, just going online and it's like, oh, we're making a musical, interesting. <laughs> Would you ever want to make a musical? Sure, I love musicals. <laughs> Are there any other genres that you'd like to work in in the future? Um, Absolutely, but I do, I never start with genre. Uh, genre, if anything, comes out from whatever the thing is, if that makes sense. So I don't know, but I do love movies and I love the wide ranging of genres. So it could be anything, yeah. Back to the music. You worked with Trent Rinzer and Atticus Ross. Atticus Ross for the first time on this film. What was the process of working with them like? It was amazing. Um, it was all remote. So they worked from LA as I was editing in um, uh, Florida and New York. Uh, and it was great, man. It was, uh, there, there is so much soundtrack that it was figuring out um, what score does and why. And I think a big thing we settled on was kind of making the score functions in its own way of it's literally the, the internal spirit of the character coming out sonically um, and hopefully bringing an audience closer to their headspace. And that was everything from Trenton Atticus would take sounds from the movie and manipulate them and use them musically to figuring out like a theme that can link uh, brother and sister in the two halves of our story. Um, but it, I mean, I love those guys, man. They're incredible. Yeah. Final question for you. A24 distributed all three of your films and they've yeah. gained kind of a cult following for a good reason. Do you have a favorite A24 film? Ooh, favorite A24 film. Um, uh, ooh, um, maybe Under the Skin, I really love. And then this year I really love The Lighthouse. Uh, those are the first two that pop in my head, yeah. Well, thank you so much for taking time to talk with me again. Loved Waves uh, in theaters now and expands December 6th. And I wish you the best of luck in your future. Thank you, brother. Great thank talking you. to you. Yeah, man.